Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We are happy to have you back as you continue on your journey towards certification. Wanted to start out with just a few housekeeping tips. First, go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We are happy to provide you with complimentary content every week, and we don't want you to miss one episode. So make sure you click subscribe and click on the bell so you'll be notified every single time we launch a new episode. So that's number one um, update for this session. The second update is related to the content that's covered here. Our focus and our mission is to support every nurse educator to achieve the NLN Certified Nurse Educator designation. Everybody's at a different point on their journey and we're happy that you're here. The last housekeeping tip is our resources. So we actually provide full scope of services to support you on your journey. We provide private coaching, group coaching, self-paced online course review, as well as live course review to prepare you holistically for your exam and to meet you wherever you are on your journey. So go ahead and head over to our website, that's drsellerseducate.com and check out all the services that we provide. We'll see you over there. So for this snapshot, we're gonna focus on reliability. What is it? What does it mean? And how can you impact reliability on your exams? We always want our exams to have a high level of reliability. Remember that the scale is zero to one. So the closer we are to one, the more reliable our results are. So let's go ahead and jump into our content. For our snapshot, we will be utilizing Dr. Caputi's review book, as well as Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing. Those continue to be our two primary resources that we use for our content review. Factors that affect reliability, that's what we want to know about, right? What is it that you need to know for the exam, as well as how can you be a better nurse educator? Remember that your ability to improve your skills and your expertise as a nurse educator is equally as important as it is for you to be successful on the exam, okay? So you being part of this community here at Dr. Sellers Educate really is serving more than just one purpose. We want you to be successful on the exam, but we also want to equip you with additional knowledge related to the most current evidence in the literature to support you to being an excellent nurse educator. Factors that affect reliability, we're going to primarily talk about two of those, but before we jump into content, let's answer the question, what is reliability? What does it mean? It is different than validity. How is it measured? We go into a much deeper review of content related to exam analysis over in our community. That's right, you can join a monthly boot camp and you can unsubscribe or remove your subscription at any time and it's just $7 a month. We know that when we have to pay for a service, we're more likely to show up. Okay, so that's why it's $7 a month. All right, so let's answer these questions about reliability. How accurate is the score? That is the first question that reliability seeks to answer for us when it is quantified on the item analysis. CUDA Richardson 20 is one of the specific indicators when you complete the psychometric testing to determine whether or not an exam question is reliable. Okay, that's the question that we're answering. How accurate is the score? N the next component we wanna talk about is consistency of evaluation across a group. That is the next component that reliability is going to validate for us is, can we reproduce these same scores across a group, right? Is it consistent? Is it reproducible? And are the test results generalizable? These are all elements that reliability helps us to clarify, verify, or answer as we look at that specific indicator. Quality of the test items. This is the first way that we can influence reliability is quality of the test items. Well, what do you mean by that? First, we always start with what strategy? That's right, an exam blueprint. That's the first step when we are writing an exam. We start with that exam blueprint because we are clearly able to identify what objectives are, or what test questions are mapped back to which objectives as part of our exam blueprint. What are the various levels of Bloom's taxonomy and cognitive learning do we expect our students to be able to validate as a result of each individual exam question? Okay, so those are all components that are directly related to the quality of test items. 
We want to ensure that our test items are well written and that they are mapped and aligned with content from the course that are also linked back to our objectives. All right, so the next way that we can influence reliability is based on the number of test items. Now, this is a common question I do hear from nurse educators. So listen in, in case you're unsure about exactly what you need to know as it relates to the number of test items that's gonna show up on your c &E exam. Determining the number of test items, it is a science to it, okay? So it depends on, first of all, the number of learning outcomes that you want to evaluate, and also the level of the exam, depending on the course and how it is, um, it aligns with the curriculum. So is this a level one or semester one exam, or is it a level four or semester four exam, right? It's gonna be different. Um, the difficulty of the questions will be different based on the level of the student. Although test reliability will increase with the number of items, the number of test items is limited by many practical constraints, okay? So first of all, and this is from Billings and Halstead on page 477, chapter 25, that's where you're gonna find a lot of content related to um, exam analysis and how to formulate and format your test questions. All right, so this is what we know when it comes to the number of test items. A general guide is to allow a minute for each question. There is some variability based on the difficulty. So perhaps if it's a longer question or if it's a um, more difficult question, then we should allocate one and a half minutes um, for that question. Um, but when we look at, look at the actual number of test items, um, we generally wanna see um, 50 questions at a minimum, but the more questions that we have on the test, the more influence we do have on reliability because obviously it allows us to um, engage students and to test their knowledge um, more often, right, with the increased number of test items. Um, so that's one consideration that you want to think about when you're looking at um, test reliability. Uh, the more items we have, it can influence reliability. Of course, you want to be practical, though, right? We don't want to write 200 item tests. Uh, we want to ensure that we are, uh, again, first of all, using that test blueprint to guide us in determining the content of the questions and the level of questions that we want to include on the exam. All right, so thank you all for your attention during this episode. This has been Dr. Sellers Educate. As always, you can reach us at info at drsellerseducate.com or head over to our website where you'll see a list of our services. Until next time, we hope you have enjoyed this episode and we'll see you in one of our programs. Have a great one.